Okay, getting ready to get started on this trunk upholstery. So I'm going to build some panels. And I've got actually four pieces. Only two of them. But there's a left and a right. Because the trunk floor has a rise in it for the gas filled tube. So that is, these are lefts. But uh, anyway, I'm just basically setting stuff up in the floor just to look at things. Try to figure things out what I want to do. So... <clears throat> These panels will actually go, you know, like that. So that rounded part goes to the back. So kind of here's what I'm thinking, even though so this is for the right side, this one's for the left. So this is stainless steel door panel trim from a four-door 55 because the four doors are shorter. Now this stainless trim that comes on 55s, it has rounded corners and it's hollow up in there. So if I just lop that off, you'd be able to see in behind it. Uh, it would take quite a bit of metal shaping to do, but they have an insert. Some of them have inserts pressed into them in the back. Uh, some do not, but this one actually does. So it would be very difficult to try to reshape that back around just by, you know, metal working it and stuff. So what I'm going to try to do is cheat it and use existing round ends. So the V, I'm going to put it this way. That way I have a rounded corner at the very back of that. So this up here will be black vinyl. This down here will be the gray straw cloth. So it'll match my door panels. So the interior, uh, you know, continues through the trunk. Now this piece is actually too short, but I have another one over there. It's longer that I can cut off. But this V will go uh, something like this. And it also has one round end. This end's cut off because it goes in a V. Uh, this end's cut off as well, but that V goes right there. So, anyway, that will come up like that. And then here's my extra hardtop dome lights, and these are not in great shape. Uh, it looks... This one's kind of dull. The other one has some pitting. So what I'm going to do is blast these, and then I'm going to go in and sand them, and then prime them, and then go back and uh, sand them out smooth. And these will get painted the same color of the material. I haven't decided if I'm going to put them up high or put them down low yet. I have to figure that out. Um, I kind of like the idea of having them up here on the, you know, right in the V. I think that looks kind of cool. I have brand new dome light lenses in the package over here for this and a pair of new bulbs. So anyway, I just have to decide. So if it goes up here, it'll be black. If it goes down here, it'll be gray. I have a, a spray paint that looks very similar to that shade of gray and it's a it's an interior trim paint so it's a matte finish so it'll look or you know low gloss so anyway, i'm trying to figure that out um, i'm not sure exactly where that trim is going to go because i actually need to build the back panel first so i'm going to build a panel that goes across the back right up to here and straight down so you're not going to see any of that stuff it's going to be completely hidden behind these upholstered panels but i'm going to build a wall that will go in there and stay and then I'm going to have a center uh, rectangle piece, a big piece that will, I'm going to have a couple of straps to put my fingers through to pull it off and I'm just going to have Velcro on it. So it'll be flush mounted with the other one. It's probably going to be the same piece that I cut out, but anyway, I want that piece to be removable so I can reach my hand in there and get to the cutoff switch, you know, put jumper cables on or change the battery, whatever I got to do, or mess with the amplifier or whatever. All the interior kit will be able to come out, but uh, I'm going to use door panel trim clips so the panels will actually all come off. But if, if I'm in a pinch, I don't want to have to try to remove everything just to get to this stuff. I want an extra access door, I guess you would say. So I've got a couple of long pieces of stainless that'll go across the back to meet off of uh, those over there, which are these. And I've got a ton more of the stuff in my shed, but I've got a lot of these long pieces. So the back piece that uh, you know goes across, it'll be it'll meet up to that. And these also have the round ends. So anyway, if I'm going to put a rectangle piece in there, I'm going to need a piece of stainless. A short piece on the back piece there's going to, have to be a short piece here and a short piece over here and then a long piece in the center so I've got these pieces here from a four-door and these are two short ones 
I don't remember what the difference is. These are off of four doors and they come off of panels that are back here. There's an upholstered panel that goes in right here on a four door. And anyway, there's an extra different length one. It's a little bit longer. I wish I had one more of those, but I don't. Uh, so I'm going to have to use it. But I don't remember if that's 55 uh, uh, or 56. You know what I mean? I don't know if that's 56, that's 55, or that's 55 and 56. I don't know. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and use these two because I've already got them here and they're really, really nice. I think I restored these for one of the four doors back in the day and then never put them on or something. So those will be my corner pieces and they're rounded. And then that round piece will go up to there. And the stainless trim will be separating the two colors. And then I've got this brand new 56 Chevy hood crest for Bel Air. So these... I think this is Bel Air. Anyway, it's a reproduction. And this will actually go bed middle of that back panel and that stainless trim. I'm going to cut it to where it butts up to that with that same angle of this perfectly. So that'll be up there like that in the middle. But that part will be on the removable panel. So I've basically got to get in here and figure out all these panels. And then I'm going to use some aluminum strap like this right here. And I'm going to cut a bunch of pieces and I'm going to make L brackets and I'm going to mount them to the body, a few of them up here. And there will be some down here on this masonite panel that I've got upholstered. And those will be, there will be holes drilled in them and that's where the door panel clips will snap in. So when that panel goes in, it'll snap in place and stay put. So I've got a lot of uh, figuring out to do and some fabrication and some woodworking and that type of stuff, but that stainless trim will come up right to the edge of this like that. So one of these pieces of stainless is getting cut in half, but everywhere there's a piece of trim on that, it's going to have a rounded corner. So it'll be a rounded corner to a rounded corner instead of just lopped off and look like crap. So I think that'll be uh, pretty nice for detail. So the interior of the car it has the black Elante up here and the gray vinyl or gray straw cloth down here. And then it has its, you know, little V Bel Air trim. This, this is for a 55 Bel Air. So I want the trunk to actually match. I've got cut pile carpet in the car and I've got an imitation suede headliner. And I've got extra of that material as well as long as, and the same of this stuff. So when I do this trunk, everything is going to match the interior exactly. This is cut pile carpet in the floor and this panel I've got in here. So this is black cut pile carpet. Then it'll have the door panel upholstery here. And then I'm going to cut and make panels to glue them on to these inserts right here. And that will be the suede, imitation suede inserts. So that's basically imitating the headliner. This is the floor and that's the door panel. So it'll all completely match perfectly uh, to the sides of the car. Now I've already built a couple of bolt-on panels here and they're bolted on and this is the imitation suede on these. I left these because it's easy to fish a wire through there so if I put my trunk light up here which what I originally that's what I was gonna do is put the trunk light back in here and run the wire down but uh, now I'm gonna do the dome light so I'm not gonna do that. Alright what I've decided to do is right here it's a piece of masonite that I've covered with carpet <clears throat> and that is actually wooden letters from Walmart these were like a dollar a piece or 88 cents or something and then this is a five gallon bucket paint stirring stick right here that I've cut down for the bar so I have the raised GM logo in here so anyway I've notched this out and curled the carpet under for the trunk lash so it looks kind of nice I have an open spot right here between the latch and the guide pin. So I basically wadded up a piece of masking tape and put here and I closed the trunk lid and I was trying to see if it would smash it or anything. It never even hit it. So I didn't realize it was that far in there. So <laughs> I'm going to install this toggle switch. This is actually the only one I've got here. That's this low profile. Now, what I want to make clear here is I don't want to buy any parts. I'm just trying to use what I have here. So this is going to be uh, mounted right in here. And that's basically my on and off button uh, for uh, the lights, the 
the dome lights that will actually be trunk lights. So I thought it might look good here. The only problem I foresee is actually two of them, and that's when I turn them on, if I ever use them, turn the lights on and then forget to turn them off and close the trunk, and then, <laughs> you know what I mean? So I don't want to put one of those jam switches back here. They're really ugly to look at, and I just don't want to buy any parts. I want to use what I got here, so I'm trying to decide whether to put this here because I could run something you know, put something in the trunk and I could tap it, but the only thing that's going to happen is, a, a, you know, it'll run the battery down if I forget to turn the lights off, so it's not that big a deal. I can always open the trunk, you know what I mean, and charge the battery or jump it. So, this switch I was thinking about putting here, and I just can't make up my mind. Um, I, I'm just about thinking of putting it maybe on the side panel off to the side, but I just don't know yet. I think it looks kind of nice there uh, along with these three things. So, man, that's dusty. So that's kind of what I'm trying to figure out uh, what to do here is just placement of things. And this, this is what takes me so long when I do something because I spend a lot of time thinking about, oh, that looks like a good spot. And then I think about the bad things. Is it going to be easy to access? Can something get across it? Is it going to be easy to replace? You know, that type of stuff. So I have to run all this stuff through my head before I make a final decision, and it just makes it even tougher. But I've got that lower channel back here in the trunk area, the floor, that the tail light wiring harness is going across, so I can drop the wires off of that down, you know, and either way and over uh, to it. So what I'm going to use a little inline fuse, and I'm going to hook it onto my battery cable with the fuse really close to the the lug there and then just run a direct hot wire to it so if it ever shorts out it'll pop the fuse on it it'll have its own fuse system basically so that's what i'm going to do i think i'm going to go ahead and blast these i'm going to pull my new dome light lens out but i'm going to go ahead and blast these and uh, get some primer on them so i can go back and sand them smooth because this one's really pitted and then i got to go in and repaint that inlay with uh aerosol chrome in a can well, another thing I got to figure out is pretty much the direction that I want these to go because these are angled. I don't know if that makes any difference or not by the way the light shines a uh, direction or not. So what I did was I stuck a little bullet connector down in there and I've got the ground side of my power probe hooked on there and then I can put the, the power down inside the other one. And I'm getting a green light there, which means it's that's good to go. And then push the button down, and I've got a light. So what I'm thinking about doing is I've got a little separate battery here, a little 12-volt battery. that It's awesome to have something like that because it's mobile, you know what I mean? Even though the power probe has a long enough cord to go from the front of your car to the back, uh, this is just nice and handy, especially if this, like if this car didn't have a battery in it. What I'm thinking about doing is rigging up a couple of little short wires and closing the garage door and turning the lights out and just getting in here and turning this, you know, different directions and also placing it up high and placing it down low to see what happens. I'm wondering if, if I put it down low, it's probably just going to light up a little bit of the area of the floor. It seems to me the higher it is, the more light would get down. I mean, obviously... Uh, so, it's probably just need to go that way, but the way that bulb's in there at an angle, it just, it, it's making me wonder if it's going to have more light coming off like that way or that way. I just don't know. Uh, so, I'm going to do a little bit more strategery, I guess. Uh, it, it's rather difficult to try to hold that in there and then use this to kind of mess around with it, so... I think I'm just going to rig up a couple little wires and uh, still, well, I guess I can hook them on here and then that way I can press the button. That's what I'll do. Anyway, I'm going to rig up some wires and see what I can get done here. All right, I kind of got this thing rigged up here a little bit. So, <laughs> if I can keep the wire from coming off of it. 
So if I put that light down low, it just pretty much lights up a little small area. But if I go up here, it lights up. I can see the light getting taller and taller on the speaker box. So it kind of looks like the way I'm going to go. Now, as far as aiming it as a direction, I can't really tell. So maybe it doesn't matter. Oh, wait, yeah. Okay, so with the bulb face in the back seat, it actually is lighting up my speaker box a little bit more. So that is the direction I'm going to put them. Awesome. All right, guys, so what I'm using on these original dome lights, and they work on the big dome lights too for the sedans and also the hardtop 56 and 7s. So the insert on these dome lights it, it just it takes a, a bullet style connector like this they're called bullets because they kind of look like a bullet you know you can get these at your local walmart in the electrical department at automotive and uh, anyway they're just a few bucks and it's you get you get both ends you get the male and female end where it goes into that um, so anyway that's what i use and they clip in there very very tight so these are what I'll be using. Now the two that I actually used to kind of hardwire this to figure it out, I barely crimped them. So now I can go in here with a pick and open that back up and still use them. Now what I usually do is I just peel off the, that cheap plastic insulator and it pretty much just looks like that at that point. And I'll use my good uh, crimpers, my American Auto Wire crimpers and crimp it on there and then I'll heat shrink the end of it. So that is how I'll connect this. So I gotta do a little wiring, um, which won't be too bad. So I've gotta pull this floor panel out anyway and I'll have to uh, put a hole down here through, the, through everything and I'm probably gonna have to pull the carpet loose uh, where I've got it spray glued and I think I stapled it too, I don't remember, but I'll have to pull that carpet a little bit to get the hole cut and smoothed and cleaned up for this to go in. So it's just going to be on a toggle switch. Uh, I'm just going to have to pay attention and be sure not to leave the light on or, you know, turn the lights on. So if I don't mean them to have them on is what I'm saying. And that, well, the only thing I'll do is kill the battery. I don't really care because all I got to do is open the trunk and charge it or jump it. So not that big a deal. All right, guys. So I took the floor panel out of the car, put it upside down on a table. And I got a towel on it so nothing gets on my carpet. But this is what it looks like under there. This is the place that clears the fill tube. So uh, I showed you in that other clip how this sunk in there. So what I had done is I had folded the carpet over, spray glued it and folded it over so it had a nice rolled edge right here. Uh, but it was actually longer. So I went in and pulled it loose and then I retrimmed it to where it's a little bit narrower. And now I've cut a piece to go in there out of poster board and I'm going to use this foam right here. This is quarter inch foam. And I'm going to cut a piece out and I'm going to spray glue it in there. So that will level this out. So it should look smooth and uniform over it after I put it back in this next time. All right. So I spray glued that and I spray glued that. And I put some tape on here to protect those edges of that carpet so I didn't get any spray glue on them and save this. I might end up using strips off of it later. So, I better put the camera down for that one. Alright, so I got it stuck on there in that insert there. It's uh, kind of even. I think it'll work. Alright, I got it flipped back over and uh, that is with that piece under there, that piece of foam. So, that works out really nice. You can't see no crease anymore. So now I need to get the carpet peeled back from here. I'm afraid to go in and try to drill that. I think it's gonna, that drill bit's gonna, or step bit or whatever, is gonna catch up that carpet and maybe pull it and then tear it up. So I would rather peel this into the carpet away and pull it out of the way and then drill the board and then clean it all up, get all the flash stuff off of it, rough edge off of it, then go back and cut the hole in it or melt a hole in it. So probably melt a hole in it. That's what I like to usually do. 
Uh, but anyway, that's where the switch will go. I did dig through a box of wiring I have in the house. It's actually a box of a whole bunch of stuff that I have for the four-door. And I've got this little setup of wire here. This is twice as big as the original dome light wires from these cars. These, If you've ever taken these cars apart, the dome light wires that go to the housing and stuff, those wires are really, really tiny. So I'm going, this is probably one size bigger or at least maybe two sides bigger i'm not sure but i found another switch which is just like the one i have but it's actually thicker than that one so i don't really want to use that one but i did find this one and this one's low profile this one of course it's gonna to have to be a pretty giant hole but that one will be pretty sweet in there so i may use this one i don't know because this one's going to set pretty high up off the the floor so this low profile one's probably going to be the best way to go so i'll probably use this one hopefully it's good i think it's new all right so i got the power wire harness made here for an inline fuse and this is going to connect to the positive battery post and i've crimped the end on there with the american auto wire crimpers those things are so awesome and then i've got this piece down here and i just used a blue barrel connector with it's the heat shrink with it and then this one is actually one of these regular yellow plastic cheapy ones and you i pull the yellow piece off and then get rid of it and then crimp it and then put some heat shrink on it it looks a little bit more professional than them old plastic things on there but so that is pretty much ready to be hooked to the battery and route it back in there. Now, I don't have a fuse in it and I won't put a fuse in it until it's all done. Well, it is a good thing that I tested these with a uh, little meter on Squawk and this one does not work. I don't know where I got this. It was just in a my box of electrical stuff over there. But that is the one that I wanted to use, but it does not work. So this one squawked at me, so I'm going to go ahead and use it. I really wanted to use that lower profile one and again I could probably go downtown and buy one I just don't want to spend any money right now so let me let me just show you why I don't want to spend any money right now <laughs> so what I was planning on doing was I was gonna buy the actual rivet tool for those blind rivets like the aircraft style rivets that these flippers take um, the way that I done my first set was a hammer and a punch and it it just smashes them and they they look like crap so uh, i bought a roll pin punch set and a brass punch and i put an indent in the brass punch to put the face of the rivet side on and then i'm going to use the roll pin punch on the back but anyway i'm going to go ahead and smash that i was going to buy the tool but that tool is 200 bucks and that's the only set of flippers i'm going to do for a hard top i'm not planning on doing a set for anybody else and I doubt I ever have another hard top. So I, I hate to spend 200 bucks on a tool I'm gonna to use one time. So instead of spending 200 bucks on that, I spent 200 bucks on this. I've been needing one of these for I could not tell you how long. This is a brake line flaring tool. And this is actually the 45 degree flare. So this will do single, double, and bubble flares. And this is the ones that, the new style ones with the rotating head. And, you can literally double flare up a brake line in seconds instead of minutes doing it the old school way that I have, like this old one here that my, my brother Don gave me long time ago, probably 20 years ago. I've used the crap out of this thing. And then, you know, you got to change out and you've got to put the, the those pieces in and it's it, it's kind of a mess, you know what I mean? I, I kind of use a, a, a combination of two different tools. And it just takes time and usually most of the time they get crooked uh, so it's probably because this is vintage and it's just worn out there's a lot of slack in it so i just broke down and went ahead and bought a flaring tool because i got to do all the brake lines on my wife's four door all of the front brake lines and i'm putting a dual reservoir master cylinder on it so i went with went with this one this is the one you see at Speedway and Summit and Jegs, and they've got them branded as their own. And it, it looks like the, it's probably the same company that makes it because it has a blue piece here with a red tip on it. It looks identical, but this is actually the K-Tool. There's a part number if you're interested. I got it off eBay, and it was like 219 bucks with free shipping. Uh, the guy had a good 
uh, feedback score and I ordered it and got it in three days. But this is the 45 degree flare. Now, in case you do not know, if you're doing stainless steel brake lines, you need a 37 degree tool. This is for like steel brake lines, which it's showing copper and stuff in here too. But so don't do a 45 flaring tool on stainless steel. Make room for the nut because the masonite and the carpet's way too thick. So that worked. Now I get the nut on it. Train. There you go, Don. I cannot believe that I didn't get very far today. It doesn't seem like I did anything. It was just intricate stuff and trying to figure things out. Uh, I did get a template made. None of these patterns I have here, they're already cut out, or they don't fit the car. There's gaps and all kinds of stuff. So I ended up making one out of poster board, and I've got it to where it fits in here pretty good. And then I'm going to have to, I still got to do a little bit more fine tuning and trimming. And then I've got to subtract for the material thickness that's going to be wrapped around. So I've got a little bit more figuring to do. So I got my, I got these lights blasted, and look how bad that pitting is on that. I mean, that's really bad. So I'm going to have to go in there and sand those, and I'm going to put some high build primer on them, and then uh, when it dries, I'll go back and sand them down with a little fine foam block, and it should level it off real nice, and then I'm just going to paint them black. I'm going to paint them like a, like a matte black or a low gloss black, because they're going to be mounted in the black Alante vinyl that, you know, it'll, it'll look pretty good, I think, especially with a new white lens in it, but I got the harness built and installed, I got the switch installed, I got the inline fuse up there, I just put the fuse in it, and there's the lights working, and my little lights on and my switch there. That's pretty awesome, man, I'm pretty happy about that. So those will be pretty much up here, kind of like that. Kind of right in the middle of that V trim up there where that stainless V trim is going to be. But man, what a job. And it is hot out here, man. I'll take it over cold any day, though. So I got to clean up all this mess because the harness that I made, uh, I used just the connector itself, not the plastic. Although I did leave the plastic ends on the switch that goes here, so it has a little insulation to it. But all these others, I did the bullets without their plastic connector on them, and, uh, or isolator, whatever you want to call it. And then I put heat shrink tubing on it. So just a pretty nice little uh, harness I made there. Man, that sucks. I didn't get very far at all. I was expecting to have all this stuff cut out and everything, but I guess that'll be for tomorrow because I am hungry. I am really hungry. So that's usually what happens when you try to do daily uploads on a car project. You end up with not really much to show for it because I spend more time thinking about things and figuring out how I'm gonna do something. <laughs> so it's not like there's a how-to book to say, hey, this is how you do this and this is the part numbers and how you, well, there is on some stuff, but not this. So that's, that's as far as I got and I'm happy with that, man. That's, 
that's pretty neat and I think the the fact of the matter of using the 55 hardtop dome lights because it's 55 only with those two little opera lights like that I think that'll add a little bit more detail so anyway time to check off a, a day off the list and that's amazing I did not I thought I was gonna get a heck of a lot further than that so day one is over with see you tomorrow